United States, December 8, 1941. Today, the Congress of the United States convenes in a solemn joint session, a session that will hear the President of the United States deliver his message that will ask for a declaration of war with Japan. The House chamber, always looking small and overcrowded, has today attained a dignity that overcomes even the great girders that temporarily support the glass roof of the chamber. The galleries started filling early this morning and, of course, are now packed. To witness this historic occasion are most of the dignitaries and officials of the Capitol. At 12 o'clock, the Speaker of the House, Sam Rayburn, called the House to order after a brief prayer by the Chaplain of the House, Dr. James Sherman Montgomery. The House passed the resolution which provided for the joint session, and then was assessed until the call of the chair, which is expected shortly before 12.30. The Supreme Court at this time, I believe, is walking into the chamber, and the Cabinet is also coming in at this time. And so, after they come in, the President of the United States will arrive, and at that time, we intend to turn you over to the Speaker's platform. We'll take you now to the Speaker's platform as the President is arriving. Senators and representatives, I have the distinguished honor of presenting the President of the United States. Yesterday, December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy, the United States of America was suddenly and deliberately attacked by naval and air forces of the Empire of Japan. The United States was at peace with that nation. And at the solicitation of Japan, was still in conversation with its government and its emperor, looking toward the maintenance of peace in the Pacific. Indeed, one hour after, Japanese Air squadrons had commenced bombing in the American island of Oahu. The Japanese ambassador to the United States and his colleague delivered to our Secretary of State a formal reply to a recent American message. And while this reply stated that it seemed useless to continue the existing diplomatic negotiations. It contained no threat or hint of war or of armed attack. It will be recorded that the distance of Hawaii from Japan makes it obvious that the attack was deliberately planned many days or even weeks ago. During the intervening time, the Japanese government has deliberately sought to deceive the United States by false statements and expressions of hope for continued peace. The attack yesterday on the Hawaiian Islands has caused severe damage to American naval and military forces. I regret to tell you that very many American lives have been lost. In addition, American ships have been reported torpedoed on the high seas between San Francisco and Honolulu. Yesterday, the Japanese government also launched an attack 
against Malaya. Last night, Japanese forces attacked Hong Kong. Last night, Japanese forces attacked Guam. Last night, Japanese forces attacked the Philippine Islands. Last night, the Japanese attacked Wake Island. And this morning, the Japanese attacked Midway Island. Japan has therefore undertaken a surprise offensive extending throughout the Pacific area. The facts of yesterday and today speak for themselves. The people of the United States have already formed their opinions and well understand the implications to the very life and safety of our nation. As Commander-in-Chief of the Army and Navy, I have directed that all measures be taken for our defense. But always will our whole nation remember the character of the onslaught against us. invasion, the American people in their righteous might will win through to absolute victory. Thank <laughs> you. 